All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children K through 12, welcome again to the Year in Review 2019 episode of the Ed Namrock podcast. And before I start the podcast, I just want to give a very special plug on the podcast, and you'll be hearing it from here on out. This podcast episode is brought to you by Tirsa's Mexican Cafe. Let me roll it for you. Tirsa. Tirsa. Well, you can Americanize it by saying Tirsa's. Great restaurant, great little spot off of Cesar Chavez and Grand Avenue, right in the heart of downtown LA. Tell them I sent you uh, for a very, very special treatment so to speak. We don't exactly have a deal worked out, but you can save some money and get a special treat. Um, I don't want to exactly shout out anything that they have uh, promotionally yet, but new year, new promos. As soon as I get word, I'll be shouting them out in the podcast, but check out the restaurant, Tirsa's Mexican Cafe. In the heart of downtown, Cesar Chavez, Grand Avenue. Check it out. Shout out to Steve and Tirsa for the lovely hospitality. I wish you guys the best in 2020. And I will be seeing you soon to eat your delicious food and taste your delicious lattes. Ooh, yeah. Anyway, I'll cut right to the chase with the year in review of 2019. I guess what I want to start off with is my personal year was pretty tough. The cat's been out of the bag for quite some time, but approximately about a year ago around this time, or even before that, I got noticed that the company I was working for that I pretty much fell head over heels working for was going to shut down and beginning January all through February and into the last weeks of March uh, was tough, was really tough. If you don't know by now, I worked for an amazing for-profit school named SAE, School of Audio Engineering located in Los Angeles, no longer located in Los Angeles. And even though I was kind of salty about the whole situation, I had to remind myself what a great time I had with this employer, not only the staff, but the students itself themselves really made that job not only tremendously rewarding spiritually, but also made it so much fun to go to work because the labor for that job for me was personally just commuting there because it's LA traffic. But once I got there, it was just most people dread going to work even during the commute. But I was looking forward to getting there as fast as possible, as safely as possible. And just zone out in the position. It was amazing from day one. I mean, it was a little bit tough, but I was up for the challenge. And, um, you know, a lot of people didn't think that I would turn that particular department around. And I did. And at the same time, I made it a, a mission with, you know, all my other colleagues, especially my campus director, my boss, that we would develop a culture. And we did. And it was going great. And unfortunately, it didn't work out the way, you know, the owners saw it. But, you know, I have I have nothing but nice things to say about this employer because it was just such a such a gift of an experience. And it ended, unfortunately. But, you know, life does go on and I have nothing but nice things to say about that company. I know other people want to say otherwise, but 
I'm not those other people. Um, I just want to thank everyone that I used to work with um, for the wonderful experience and the people I I still talk to to this day. Um, Yeah, that was the first thing that, you know, that I wanted to just kind of shout out a little bit. And then, of course, like, I was back on the struggle trying to find new employment. I decided to do the ride shirt thing. Um, you know, it's, it's tough because it took me a while to find something and amongst freelancing and doing other things. I mean, it's, it's very, it's very challenging and you're trying to find and match you know, the pay that you were making before. So that way you don't fall behind on any of your finances. And sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. So you have to improvise. Um, but fortunately there was light at the end of my tunnel. And if all goes according to plan, the timing's right. And I mean, the wheels are already in motion now. Um, your boy is going to start a new position in about two weeks, two weeks. And, um, Stay tuned for developing details about that. But like I said, light light at the end of the tunnel was awesome after, you know, months of struggling. Um, I think the other thing, too, is psychologically, it was different for me because, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person that doesn't really like to not be in a team environment. I really enjoy working with people by nature. I'm just a a freaking socialite and, you know, I really didn't want to escape that type of environment. And of course, you know, fortunately I found myself back in that and that type of environment, but I'm not one to, to hide. I love engaging with people and you know, that, that kind of went away and how to kind of force myself back into other types of work that involved working in a team. And it just wasn't the same. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, I, I found something which is great. Like I said, uh, stay tuned for more details. Um, but it, it, it to me, it just sucks not working in a team team environment. I know a lot of people don't like it. Depends on the occupation that you're in, but I really get a kick out of it because I like learning new things from new people. And you know, there's a general, you know, senses about people working in groups that you know more productivity is is accomplished when you know, you work in groups and I totally agree with that, but nonetheless, um, physically I'm, I'm doing okay. I mean, I, I'm, I could drop some LBs. That's probably, that's probably going to be on uh, my to-do list for 2020. I have to, it's unless I'm pushing 40. So, you know, things have to change now, uh, physically. So, you know, I can't be chomping down on, you know, cheeseburgers at 12 o'clock, 12 midnight, you know, after a night of binge drinking. So, and that goes along with that too. It's like, yeah, I think it's my body's telling me something. (laughs) I mean, if you don't listen to your body, then you gotta be a fool, but you know, I'm guilty as charged. So, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there was other things too that I kind of struggled with, but I kind of got over, I mean, adapt and overcome is what a lot of my friends say. And a lot of them are Marine veterans. Um, so yeah, I, I take that into full consideration when I find myself on a pickle. So um, other than that, the the one thing I wanted to review in 2019 was, of course, my passion for um, for sports. And the the first thing, of course, at the beginning of the year, the Patriots won the Super Bowl, which is my team. It's no secret. Um, they beat the Rams and earlier in Feb- in this year in February um, in a defensive battle, uh, and Julian Edelman wound wound up being the Super Bowl MVP because of a stellar uh, performance uh, as the top wide receiver 
on the squad. And I think after that, okay, so, you know, season ends, whatever. And then fast forward, another season begins again. But even before that, I mean, we saw uh, the women's, uh, the USA women's national uh, soccer team win a world cup uh, in the summer in France. And um, I I believe the, the highlight, the star of the whole thing was not only the team, but uh, one particular individual, which is Megan Rapino. Uh, she scored, I think, a tournament high six goals uh, in that whole the whole tournament, which is crazy. And then, of course, there was uh, I can't pronounce her last name, but her, Simone, um, the gymnastics girl. Um, she won her 25th career medal um, and she nailed two moves that will be named after her. Apparently I was like, wow. Um, and of course, you know, all the horse deaths in Santa Anita. Don't even get, I won't even get to, into that. Uh, Tiger Woods winning the masters golf tournament early in April. Um, and fast forward to, the NFL regular season. I mean, I, I can talk all this shit about my team and how horrible they're doing offensively, but defensively they were doing stellar up until they played Baltimore. But all a lot of this season was pretty much uh, filled with a lot of controversy. I mean, there was the whole the whole Antonio Brown thing, uh, which I personally think um, he might have a really bad case of CTE that's catching up to him. I I am not a doctor, obviously, but uh, all all signs point to him being being uh, I'm not gonna say a victim because that's not the correct term. Um, everything he's doing behaviorally is symptomatic um, for that, and probably then some. I don't think it's gonna get any better because if he's already acting like that, then yeah, um, that's impulsive. Um, because of the brain damage that he's probably suffered. And if you don't know what's happened to him in his career, he's gotten fucked up pretty bad. Um, And then there's the whole thing that happened with uh, Miles Garrett and Mason Rudolph. Um, Thursday night football. Yeah. I I don't know what happened. It was during a sack, if I remember correctly. And Miles Garrett, uh, grabbed Mason Rudolph by the face mask, took his helmet off and swung it at his head. And, you know, luckily the the helmet was turned under. I'm, I'm sure it still hurts, but um, if Miles Garrett would have turned the helmet just a little bit, it would have hit Mason Rudolph on the head with the harder part of the helmet and I don't know what would have happened after that. I mean, he got suspended indefinitely. He tried to say that Mason Rudolph called him a, a racial slur. Rudolph denied it. And I, I, I don't know. Um, and then along, along that, along the lines too, you know, um, my beloved Dodgers fucking choked again. And the P the team that wound up beating my beloved Dodgers one of <laughs> winning the fucking world series. So, Congratulations, Washington Nationals. Yay. Um, And, of course, there's uh, Zion Williamson, and there's, of course, the Lakers that are doing pretty damn good right now. Uh, Canelo Alvarez. um, Guys just sheer dominating. Uh, I don't don't know what else... uh, I can spotlight, but there was so many things that happened. And another, another thing that I kind of, you know, really kind of highlighted uh, earlier in the year, but on, on social media was, was the Toronto Raptors winning the NBA championship with uh, Kawhi Leonard and then Kawhi kind of booked it to LA. <laughs> so that was kind of crazy. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't want to, get in get into it too much but um the other thing too is okay Dirk Nowitzki he he retired after 21 years in the league um and then let's 
the news, the news part. I think the the most talked about thing was uh, the impeachment of Donald Trump. Uh, that was huge, and I mean he's impeached, but doesn't mean he's removed from. You know he's not he's not removed from office, so you know that's that's still waiting to be seen. Um, there was a, a juicy Smollett, or I think that I pronounced that correctly, who um, I guess fabricated a racial um, and homophobic attack. <laughs> um, and everyone was already calling this guy out. Even you try to make it about homophobia and, and racial and a, and, a, and a race thing, but everyone in that community too was like, yo man, I think you lying. <laughs> Which is funny because the, just the way it was played out and the time of day and all the circumstances involved, it just did not make any fucking sense. But, um, there was that R. Kelly interview where he just spazzed out because he's uh, he was indicted of 10 counts of ag aggravated criminal sexual abuse. And he still continues to deny the charges. That, so that's weird. Um, there was also the, you know, like some of the presidential candidates that came out and you know, came out swinging pretty hard and then just fell off like Beto, Beto O'Rourke and Kamala Harris. Um, I remember early in the year too, there was that mass um, shooting in New Zealand at a, at a mosque. It was a uh, 28 year old Australian. He was charged with 51 counts of murder and 40, 40 counts of attempted murder. And he has pled not guilty to all charges, which is fucking ridiculous. And the guy videotaped it and live streamed it, which is fucking disgusting. Um, we had the whole thing with the um, parents who were accused of paying bribes for their children to attend some of the country's most prestige universities, USC being one of them. Um, Lori Laughlin was one of the... Um, uh, was one of the celebrities that were charged of conspiracy to commit fraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering. Uh, then there was the picture of the black hole um, that I don't know why they didn't make heavy headlines. That's weird. That was like, I know it took a long time to even get that quality of, uh, of a picture. Cause it's really difficult. Apparently uh, Julian Assange was extradited. Um, they enter uh they got him in Ecuador at the Ecuadorian embassy. Um and now he's facing charges of, you know, all kinds of shit. But uh what else? I think well I don't know what else. I mean there was a whole Attorney General William Barr testifying, there was Robert Mueller. There was Michael Cohen. Um, there was the whole immigrant, uh, the migrants being detained at U.S. borders, border patrol stations. Uh, there was a couple pretty powerful images that they took at, at the McAllen, Texas uh, border patrol station that was just completely overcrowded. Ebola. Um, the there's a bunch of shit. I mean, I'm just looking at some of the pictures here on on a website and you know it's the hong kong thing i mean the hong kong thing is so crazy um because you know they they were trying to pass a law to extradite people to the mainland from hong kong which a lot of people were not down with um, there was, uh, Donald Trump meeting with Kim Jong-un, uh, at the DMZ and there was the whole Jeffrey Epstein thing where he hung himself, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, they'll, I could go down that rabbit hole, but I don't want to because that that's I'll save that for another podcast. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there was, there was there's a lot of ground to cover, but I mean, I could only go so far, and the shit in Hong Kong is still going down. Uh, Andrew Yang is also a presidential candidate, which is, I believe, the only person of color on. Uh, the democratic, uh, basically debate, you know, stage. I mean, the last I saw, he was the only one, um, there was a, what's her name? Uh, Greta, uh, uh, Thunberg, Thunberg, well, I can't pronounce that. Um, yeah, there was a lot. And then, um, you know, there, there's more. I mean, I don't, there's some stuff that are quite frankly right here. I don't think is too, too significant, but the, the main story that was talked about was the whole, um, impeachment of Donald Trump. So we'll see, we'll wait and see what the fuck's going to happen with that. So, um, but until then, happy new year. Um, 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 I hope you had a great Christmas and may 2020 serve as your bridge to success in your life. It's the best way I can put it because, you know, change starts from within. It's not, it's not context. It's not dialogue. It's within it's massive action. So, you know, be the change you want to see. And hopefully everything will fall into place. Until then, I will see you in 2020.